everyone, I'm Molly Benoctopour and I lead the healthcare investing at Drive Capital. Today, we're going inside the cell and gene therapy market map. Let's start by breaking down this market map by the numbers. We've identified 256 companies in this map that have raised a total of $8 billion. Of those companies, we've talked to 35% of them and invested in one, Forge Biologics, which we'll talk about later. So let's zoom out. How did we get here? The evolution of medicine has certain significant moments in history that transform illnesses that were once death sentences into treatable diseases. Probably the biggest example of this was the discovery of penicillin in 1928 by Alexander Fleming. Prior to this discovery, bacterial infections were often death sentences. These fundamental shifts don't come around often, and I would argue we are in the early innings of another one with the advancements in cell and gene therapy. Just like with the discovery of penicillin, gene therapies have the potential to cure once incurable diseases. Despite still only being at the beginning of realizing the potential of gene therapy, the concept was actually introduced back in 1970, and the first gene therapy trial for humans was performed in 1990, over 30 years ago. I wrote in my journal, a great day for the world, a great day for medicine. Gene therapy has been approved. Our daughter is the first patient in the world to receive gene therapy. Then the entire field was set back years after a tragic death of 18-year-old Jesse Gelsinger in 1999. Not only was Jesse's death tragic, but it resulted in the collapse of the field of gene therapy research, setting its progress back years. So why are we looking at the field now? Since that terrible tragedy, the science has improved significantly, and there were two key milestones that we look for when identifying a catalyst in a market. First, in 2017, Spark Therapeutics had the first in vivo therapy, that means in the body, to treat a rare form of inherited blindness. Two years later, the second in vivo gene therapy, Zolgensma, was approved to treat spinal muscular atrophy type one. What was once a scientific theory was now being used to treat individuals with severe genetic conditions. To put that into perspective, there is a child named Evelyn with SMA type one that was the first to be treated with the now approved Zolgensma in 2015. Evelyn is now a healthy, happy six-year-old. You may be asking yourself, why is Drive Capital looking at the gene therapy market? And it's a totally fair question. If you look at our portfolio, most of our investments are in software companies. And we should call out the elephant in the room, we are not scientists. I was a math major, not a microbiology major. However, we are investors, and at Drive, when we create new market maps, we look for two key things a significant platform shift and a compelling why now. And that is exactly what we see in the cell and gene therapy market. And importantly, Columbus, Ohio, where Drive Capital is based, is also a leader in the space. Zolgensma, the second in vivo gene therapy approved in the US, was invented right here at Nationwide Children's. There is significant institutional knowledge located here, giving Drive Capital a competitive advantage. So where are we now? Since Evelyn was treated in 2015, the number of gene therapies in clinical trials has grown exponentially. In 2020, there were more than 1,300 therapies in development with 25 therapies in phase three trials. Let's talk about where we at Drive see opportunities for investments in the cell and gene therapy market map. At a high level, we are looking for platforms that solve a critical pain point in developing these gene therapies. One example is manufacturing. Let's first take small molecules, which make up the majority of drugs in the market. They are biologically complex, but relatively easy to manufacture. A very simple way to think about it is that 80% of the complexity in developing a small molecule is in the biology, while only 20% is in the manufacturing process. With gene therapies, that totally flips. Only 20% of complexity is in the biology today, and 80% is in the manufacturing process. Yet, just like with small molecules, the vast majority of the value is accrued in the biotech company. Our thesis was simple. Could we find a way to realign the value accrual with the complexity, which led to our investment in Forge Biologics? Forge is a gene therapy CDMO that is building a unifying manufacturing platform from early stage research through commercial products for both external customers and its own internal pipeline. In short, Forge is solving the complexity of the manufacturing process while also realizing the upside from its own internal therapies. 
But why is manufacturing so important? Well, remember those 1300 gene therapies in development? They all need to be manufactured and we don't have enough supply today to meet that demand. As we think about the future of gene therapy, we see a number of additional opportunities to solve critical pain points, including new viral and new non-viral approaches, new ways to optimize plasmids, and platforms focused on identifying patients with rare diseases or specific variants of more common diseases. And just like with other large technology platform shifts, some of the new applications will be hard to predict today, but we think we're just at the beginning. So if you're a founder passionate about the future of medicine, please don't hesitate to reach out to share with us what you're working on.